Okay, in this section, it is nothing but word problems. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into these. So this is module 38. The first topic says calculating and comparing simple interest and compound interest. Okay, so um, Laura deposits $6,000 in an account and it pays 2% interest per year, compounded annually. Eric deposits six, it's not 6,000, it's 60,000, into an account that also pays 2% per year, but it is simple interest. Find the interest Laura and Eric earn during each of the first three years. Then decide who earns more interest for each year. Assume there are no withdrawals and no additional deposits. So first of all, we need to understand what is the difference between compounded and simple, okay? Simple means when they calculate your interest, they only calculate it using the initial deposit. That's it. Compounded interest means that they use your balance at the end of at the beginning of each year. So when I make my deposit in let's say January of $60,000, at the end of that year, they're going to calculate my interest for the first year based off of that $60,000. However, that interest that gets earned gets added to my bank account. And so now my bank account is at a higher dollar amount, right? And then for the second year, now they're gonna collect the interest on this higher dollar amount, okay? Whereas simple interest is only calculating your interest based off the initial $60,000 amount. Okay, it doesn't matter how much your account grows, they're still only going to base your interest off of the initial amount. So here, Laura deposits $60,000 into an account. So let's do year one. So for Laura, we're gonna take her $60,000, we're gonna multiply it by her rate, which is 0 0.02 in a decimal, and one year has passed. So that is 60, one, two, three, times 0.02 is $1,200. So this is how much interest she's earned. Now, um, Eric also starts off with $60,000. Same rate, and again, year one. So he gets $12,000 in interest as well. Or 1200, I'm sorry. So in this case, these are the same. Now let's do year two. Year two is where it really will start to change. So for Laura, she doesn't start, she's doing compound interest. So she doesn't start with the $60,000. She starts off with whatever's in her account. So she has the $60,000 plus the $1,200 that she earned in interest. So her bank account is, or her computations are actually going to start off with 61 um, 200 and then she multiplies that by her rate and again one more year has passed so we just use one and I get one two two four in interest so a little bit more than before for Eric though you do not use his balance. It's simple interest, which means you are only allowed to use his beginning amount. So it's the same rate. Again, another year has passed. So he earns only 1,200 more. So in this case, Laura has more, earns more. Now year three. So again, Laura is compounded. So her balance was this first. 
Then she collected this much interest. So now her bank account is at this dollar amount. And at the end of the year, that gets multiplied by the rate and the time. Only one more year has passed from year two to year three. And if we multiply this together, we end up with 1248.48. Again, a little bit more than it was before. For Eric, again, his is simple interest, so it only gets calculated by the initial deposit. For another year, which means he earns another $2,000 in interest. Again, here, Laura earns more. Let's look at what their accounts. This doesn't ask me this information, but I'm just, as an investigation, wondering um, who has the most money at the end. So at the end, Laura has this dollar amount that she started with at the beginning of year three, but she adds 12.48.48 at the end of the year. So now her balance is this dollar amount. Whereas Eric started off with $60,000 and then he adds 1,200 and 1,200 more than 1,200 more. So his balance is 63600. Zero, zero. So at the end of year three, there's really only a $72 difference here. $72.48 difference. Okay, um, and we'll start to look at things more because this one was compounded using simple, or this one was computed using simple interest, this one was computed using compound interest. There are, excuse me, there are different levels of compound interest and we'll see how those affect the values as well, okay? So this topic is finding a final amount in a word problem on compound interest. Okay, in order for us to find the final amount on a compound interest, we need to know the formula here. And not only do we need to know that formula, but we need to know what each of those variables stand for. We know P is the initial amount. Okay, A is like the amount afterward. So after the time has passed, that's what A is. T is, of course, in years. And then R is, of course, your rate. Always make sure it's in decimal form. N is different. N equals the number of times compounded in a year. So we need to know about N. N equals one if it's annually compounded. N equals 2 if it's semi-annually compounded. N equals 4 if it's quarterly compounded. N equals um, 12 if it's compounded monthly. N equals... And then there's another one, and it depends on the problem. Um, but I don't think we use this one, but they could use 360 for yearly or for daily. I'm sorry. And some books use um, 365 or 364. So it just depends on what book you have. I think I collected problems to stay away from that just because each book is a little bit different. But we'll go ahead and see what we have here. So this problem says, Melissa deposited $400 into an account with 4.1% interest, compounded semi-annually, which means I'm going to be using N equal to two. Assuming that no withdrawals are made, how much will she have in the account after three years? So this is going to be my T value. And then of course, this is what was deposited so this is my initial amount, P, and this is, of course, my percentage, so that's my rate. But my rate needs to be in decimal form. So again, if you're confused, use your calculator to 
put that in decimal form. And round to the nearest cent. So I'm going to plug all these values in. A equals 400 parentheses. This is the number one plus R over N raised to the N times the T. And I can type this whole thing because everything on this side is nothing but numbers. I can type the whole thing in. Just make sure when you do it that what you have on your screen looks exactly like what you have on your paper. And I get to the nearest cent, the one is not going to change the nine. So this is 451.79. And there we go. Now let's see the next problem. It says finding the final amount. This one says finding the final amount in a word problem using on continuous compound interest. So this isn't every day or every month or every year. This isn't even every um, hour, okay? This is continuous. So every single millisecond that goes by, this thing is continuously count calculating your interest, okay? And how do you do that if you don't know how many times that has happened um, in the year? Okay, you can't have an N value in the old X, uh, formula. There's no N. I don't know how many times it was compounded. So it's a whole new formula when it says continuously compounded. And it's this one. And I call it the PERT formula. If you remember old shampoo PERT. Um, because it literally spells that, but it's your initial amount P times E raised to the power R times T. So that's those are the only three values that we need to find is the initial amount and then the rate and then the time. E is just a button in our calculator. It's just a number. So it says suppose that this $1,700 is borrowed for two years so that's important, and this of course is important, at an interest rate of 6% per year, compounded continuously. Find the amount owed, assuming no payments are made until the end. Round your answer to the percent. So we're gonna take A, which is the amount afterward, and then the investment, or the initial amount was the 1700. E is a number in your calculator, rate is going to be 0 0.06 as a decimal and the years is two now you could put it in parentheses or you could just type in your calculator times two either way it'll still work okay now these are all numbers so i can type this in my calculator the right hand side 1700 my e button and then I'm gonna put 0 0.06 times two up there in the exponent. And we round to the nearest cent. So this second four is not going to change the first four. So we end up with 1916.74. And that is the answer. Now let's work on this topic is finding the final amount in a word problem on continuous exponential growth or decay. This formula is just like the PERT formula. The only difference is instead of using P for the initial amount, they use this notation, A sub zero, which basically means the amount at time zero, okay? Which is another way of saying initial amount, okay? So, it's the same formula, just a different letter to represent the initial amount. The mass of a radioactive substance follow, follows a continuous exponential decay model. This is important, decay. If it's decay, that means that the rate, this means the rate is negative or less than zero, okay? 
Um, if it's a growth, then that means that the rate would be a positive. So decay means the rate should be negative. Growth means the rate should be positive. So it says a sample of this radioactive substance has an initial mass of, so initial mass of this, that's going to be our A0 or our P, whichever letter you're thinking of, and decreases continuously at this rate. So that means R is going to be a negative 0.03. Find the mass of the sample after six days. Okay, so now the time is in days. T equals six days. Round the answer to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to plug everything in. I have A, capital A, without the sub-zero. This is the amount afterward. Um, my initial amount is 9471. I have my E because it's continuous growth or decay. My rate, negative 0.03 times my time which is six days all on the side is numbers so i am going to type those in my calculator nine four seven one e negative zero point zero three times six and i get seven it's around to the nearest tenth so the four is not going to affect the eight and this is your final amount and that is the end of module 38